This is a team that has a little bit of a chip on its shoulder playing here at Jaguar. They had an 18 game home win streak snapped earlier this season and they want to get back to that elite status. It is absolutely electric down here right now. This team is ready to try and take back one from Don Bosco. Coming into this game, Hofstra had just beaten Iona and you're a team that's had a target on your back all season. What was your mindset coming into tonight? Princeton has been using that two goaltender rotation all season and as if that didn't already make Coach Pryor's decision difficult tonight, he's already seen both Sean Bonner and Mike Condon play against Yale in two different games this season. Before tonight's game, he tweeted that he finally gets a chance to watch Hofstra play and to possibly see Nat Lester score his 1,000th point. They have not won a game since he got hurt on November 27th against Boston University. It's been a tough three weeks for Hofstra. Coach was very honest. He said, there's no way that we're going to come back and win this game if we continue turning the ball over like we did in the first half. Well, as you mentioned, Hofstra certainly has turned the corner, and because of that, Mo Cacera is looking for ways to keep these guys fresh and focused. So today, he left a Newsday article in each player's locker about Knicks point guard Tony Douglas, and how even when he has a poor game, he knows there's always the chance to redeem himself the next time, and he plays with confidence no matter what. And that's the confidence that Mo Cacera wants out of his guys tonight in another big game against VCU, guys. Hey guys, Don Bosco will be without one of its stars, Leonte Carew, today because he's on his way back from the U.S. Army All-American Bowl in Texas. He's one of four Don Bosco National Championship football players that was on that All-Star team. And even though the West beat the East 24 to 12 yesterday, Carew had one catch for 11 yards and was overthrown another couple times. And I asked Coach DeVirio what playing without him means today. He said the big key is going to be on defense. Carew's a guy that can defend from the one to the five he's a force on the rebounds and he's a force on their press you'll see them limit the press today guys it's something the orange has ignored since it entered the top ten we don't even know that we rank seven Andy Routens made sure it would never distract his teammates he said uh, me and the team have been talking and we don't want to focus on our ranking could you do me a favor tonight before you do the team intros don't mention where we're ranked in the polls. I feel like coming out there and announcing our names was enough. So I never mentioned the team's ranking. And they kept moving up, moving up, moving up. Then SU hosted a top 10 opponent. It still didn't matter to Routens though. I said, Andy, I'm going to have to mention that Georgetown's ranked 7th tonight. I don't want Coach getting upset with me that I'm not giving you guys your just due. The Cuse even ignored its number one ranking. Senior name. The only time you're ever going to hear we're the number one ranked team in the country while you're in the Dome, you want me to say it? I told him no. You know, it's, it's, it's how it's been the entire season, and you know, it's how we, we're going to stick to. And it's no different right now. We, we plan, we're taking every game one at a time. Keeping the ranking out of player intros isn't just to help Syracuse stay grounded. It's a strategy. I'm saying our ranking, I feel like we give the, you know, the other team extra motivation before the game started. It's a principle the players have been taught since high school. We were so excited the first time we, we got in the rankings. We're like, oh, wow, we're in the state rankings. This is awesome. And, you know, then you lose, and then you write out, or you lose at the end of the year, and all that was great while it was there. But it's not what you're trying to accomplish. So. Players and coaches agree that the only number one that matters is the one the Orange hopes to have next to its name in early April. Until then, any ranking or tournament seating remains insignificant. For ESPN U Campus Connection, I'm Eva Zacharia. Ralph, thanks so much. I'm here with Brian O'Neill, who had a monster game tonight with four points. Brian, Yale is known for its transition game, and you had a beautiful goal 
off transition tonight. Walk us through that play. Yeah, it was actually, they were putting us pressure on us for the first minute in that shift. And then it was kind of a broken play in our zone. And uh, Nick Joskowiak had his head up and fouled me. And I kind of just snuck in behind the D that we're pinching. And uh, the goalie gave me the five hole. So luckily I went in. One of Coach's keys that he told us tonight was some confidence in your zone. Now, Princeton dominated on offense for a lot of the night tonight. How good did you guys feel on defense? Yeah, I mean, you want to keep them to the outside as much as possible. And they had a lot of possession time in our zone. But our goalie was really good tonight. And we felt good because we kept them to the outside. Didn't give them too many rebound chances. So if we can do that, we feel pretty good about our defensive play. Now, tonight, you had a hand in four goals with the four points. You also moved into fourth place on the all-time scoring list at Yale. And on top of all that, you have 30 family members that were here tonight to watch you play. Talk a little bit about what tonight means to you personally. Yeah, I mean, this is my last time playing in front of my hometown uh, in college. So it's just an unbelievable just get the win, number one, because we really needed that. But then to play well personally, just couldn't have scripted it any better. I'm just so happy my family could see that. And now for the team, if you win tomorrow night, you're set up to have a bye in the first round of the playoffs. What's the key to victory? Quinnipiac, great rival of us. We've got to play good defense. If we played a good defense, we'll get some offensive chances, and we'll need good goaltending again. And hopefully we'll get that, and I think we will. All right, Brian, thanks for joining thanks us. Congratulations. Ralph, back up to you. In sports tonight, the 2009 Heisman Trophy winner has been announced. Mark Ingram was awarded college football's top individual prize earlier tonight. The running back is the first ever trophy winner for the Crimson Tide. Ingram rushed for over 1,500 yards this season and had 15 touchdowns. The sophomore helped Alabama to a perfect record. The vote was the closest ever for this year's Heisman. Ingram defeated second place finisher Toby Gerhardt by just five votes. That's only 28 points. The newest member of college football's elite club gets a chance to show us all why he came out on top in the BCS championship game this January. On to basketball now, Syracuse returns home tomorrow to take on St. Francis. A win over the Terriers would make the Orange 10-0 and give SU its best start since the turn of the century. The hot start has surprised everybody so far this season. Lots of questions surrounded the Cues coming in and many saw this as a rebuilding year for Jim Beheim's squad.